Hello, my name is Bonnie Knox and my great-grandfather was on board the steamship Sultana when it exploded and sank after the Civil War ended. When the war ended, there were several thousand Union prisoners of war in southern POW camps. Among them were Wayne County's 102nd Ohio Volunteer Infantry, the OVI, which had been captured at Athens, Alabama on September 25, 1864. When Lee surrendered on April 8, 1865, these prisoners from the many southern camps, including Andersonville, were moved west to Vicksburg, Mississippi. On April 24, 1864, 2,400 of these Union POWs boarded the Sultana for the ride up the Mississippi to St. Louis and then the train ride to Columbus for their long-awaited homecoming. After almost one and a half days of uneventful travel up the Mississippi, at approximately 2 o'clock a.m., three of the four boilers exploded. The blast was equivalent to a ton of dynamite exploding. The blast, plus the flying shrapnel and the scalding water from the boilers, pretty much devastated the entire ship. Hundreds were killed outright. Hundreds more began pushing and shoving and jumping into the cold, dark water. Due to the melting snow and spring rains, the Mississippi River was at its flood height. Two men from Wayne County's Company H, the 102nd OVI, Private George Schmutz and Private Philip Horn were blown several hundred feet into the cold night water by the blast. Both men grabbed onto floating debris and started their long five-hour float down the Mississippi River where they were rescued. Private Otto Barden, another Wayne County soldier, described the scene. First a terrible explosion, then hot steam, smoke, pieces of brick bat, and chunks of coal came thick and fast. Barden stayed on board ship until the fire forced him into the water, where he clung to a floating door until he was rescued several hours later. Ten men from Company G, also from the 102nd OVI, were quartered together on deck. Sergeant David Heights was sent flying 50 feet into the air and slammed into the main gangplank and finally fell heavily into the water. Grabbing a piece of the debris, he also started his long journey down the river. Of those ten soldiers, Heights was the only survivor. My grandfather, Daniel William Lugenbeal, was one of the lucky survivors of this terrible tragedy. After the explosion and as the ship began to go down, he remembered there was an alligator in a wooden box in the wheelhouse. The alligator was being brought up north since most Yankees had never seen one. Since all of the other large pieces of loose wood were already being used by men in the water to remain afloat, he tore open the box, took the box out of the closet, and ran a bayonet through the alligator three times. He then pulled out the gator's body, climbed into the box, and slid it into the water. He told of men trying to grab onto the box, but he kicked them off, stating that then they would all go under. He was rescued about three miles below Memphis, Tennessee by a gunboat called the Essex and was taken from there to a hospital. He is almost always mentioned in accounts of the sinking of the Sultana since this is a colorful and true story. Hello, my name is Charles Leopold. I'm chairman of the military committee at the Wayne County Historical Society. The steamship Bostonia II was in the area at the time of the explosion and rescued several hundred half-drowned half-frozen soldiers. Some saw the steamship, but in their weakened condition could not reach her. Memphis, seven miles down river, was alerted by all the screaming soldiers that floated by. They responded by ordering all small boats and one dock steamer to the rescue. Wayne County's Smuts was rescued by one of these boats. There were partially submerged trees along the flooded banks which provided a holding place for soldiers to grab onto until rescued. Barden had the good luck of finding one of these trees. An hour after the explosion, the burned out Sultana sank to the bottom of the Mississippi. By daybreak, there were no more cries for help from the river. All soldiers and civilians who were on board when the explosion happened were either rescued or perished. The sinking of the ship the Sultana was the worst maritime disaster in the U.S. history. More people lost their lives than in the sinking of the Titanic. The Sultana was registered to carry only 376 people. This was the count on board. 
2,400 recently released Union prisoners, 200 civilians and crew, which had a total of 2,600 total on board, 600 survivors, which left 2,000 deaths resulting from the disaster. Of the Wayne County contingent, the 102nd OVI, there were seven survivors and at least 11 that perished. These could, there could have been more Wayne County soldiers in other units that also perished. As with other military and civilian disasters, it, was all, it has always been difficult to determine blame. So it was with the sinking of the Sultana. There were several military inquiries, but no one person was ever found to be guilty of negligence. We do know that the ship owners were well paid for their services. They were paid $5 per soldier for the ride up the Mississippi River. This was a great incentive to overload the ship. The loss of these brave soldiers brought much human suffering to their families. Private Alexander Sackett left behind a wife and six children. Private James Cook's father refused to believe that he had been killed. At four o'clock each afternoon for the rest of the old man's life, he would go out to his front porch and watch for his son's return. Private Eli Provine's father suffered a fatal heart attack upon learning that his son had died on the Sultana. So close on the heels of a war that claimed over 620,000 men, the Sultana's dead were treated by newspapers like any other battle's casualties. Regrettably, the tragic deaths of so many prisoner, prison camp survivors never garnered the historic attention so deserved. The deaths of 2,000 soldiers on the Sultana can easily be viewed 150 years after the fact as cold statistics tallied from government reports. But these were real people who suffered so much while serving our country. Each one of them had a life that mattered to their family, their friends, and to their community. Behind every one of these soldiers lies an intimate story. I'm Fritz Horn, and my great-great-uncle was Private Philip Horn, and he was the next to the last of the 600 Sultana survivors to die in April of 1934. He is buried in Worcester Cemetery close to his friend and fellow survivor, Private Otto Barden.